You, you'll find that you, you get sick of hearing those bells squeal. I'm sure you've heard that, right? Well, this, this particular blower comes with an automatic tensioning device. You're not going to hear any squealing belts on this blower. This motor sits on a hinge door. Right here is your pin for the hinge. Right here. Yeah, right there. So the weight of the motor is actually what's keeping the belts in tension continuously. Now, if you need to change those belts, it comes with a little hydraulic jack. The blower package does. Pump it up, just like you would if you were changing your tire. Take the weight off of the, off of the uh, door. Slide the belts off. Very, very simple. Very simple. So the belts eventually are going to wear, though. And eventually, you're going to have to replace them. Again, over time, I've got this four, four or five belts uh, on each uh, blower. But it is, a, it is a maintenance item. They, they end up getting old. They end up cracking. You know, just, they just get old and wear. So they do not, Arizona does not, by the way, manufacture the, uh, the belts oil, but they do manufacture the guard. And obviously, they don't manufacture the motor, but they manufacture the base frame. Again, I keep on bringing that up because this is a major selling point. And there's packages out in the field, and something goes wrong, what happens a lot of times is they call the guy who sold the thing, and he says, well, hang on a second, let me get uh, so-and-so -so on the line. They call up the packager, and he says, oh, well, that must be a silencer problem. So call Universal Silencer. Or it might be a motor problem. Call U.S. Motors. You're not going to get that from here, from these guys. What you're going to get is, okay, you got a problem, we'll take care of it. What I talked to you about earlier, about these guys having the ability to stick a blow on a truck and get it up here, that's what they, the, the, how their level of stocking is. There is probably no, any, no other blower manufacturer in the country that's able to do that, even the guys that manufacture in the country. So, um, There is some instrumentation with the blower. Part of it is that filter. Some of it is dependent upon the specification, some vibration perhaps, or um, uh, vacuum, uh, vacuum uh, switch or a pressure switch. Once your blower exceeds a certain pressure, it will trip the motor. And uh, you have to figure out why, whether there's a valve closed somewhere or whatever. That's more of an operational thing, although it could go back to your maintenance. Um, I mentioned the, uh, the requirement of, of maintenance on the filter. If you look at number one on your, on your uh, piece of literature, you can see that the air comes in through this plain end pipe goes through the bathroom area, that round area, white area in the middle, that's your, uh, that's your filter. You can access that from the top, and we'll show you how we take that off and maintain it. That's pretty much it. Uh, from a maintenance point of view, you've got this filter, you've got the oil, no grease, the oil, <laughs> and you've got the um, belts. I mentioned a check valve earlier. The check valve is a rubber flapper. It's, there's nothing you have to do maintenance-wise, but if for whatever reason over time it fails or whatever, you'll notice on uh, number, um, it's, it's number three on this bottom sheet right here, on this bottom block, you've got six bolts. Undo those six bolts, lift it up. There's your rubber flapper right there. Um, if the unit comes in an enclosure, one panel door you can take off, put it aside. All of your maintenance related to the oil changing and the filter can all be done on one side. So if you want to, just from a, from a regular maintenance point of view, just check the levels. I don't know if you have to go around with a sheet of paper or what, but if it's just a visual check, you just take it off, put it aside, look at it, maybe feel it, make sure everything's okay. Put it back on, and away you go. Obviously, the one without the panels, you don't have to worry about it. It's pretty easy to access everything. I bring that up because you don't have to reach over or anything to change this oil. We'll go over that when we get there. And uh, they have a little ball check valves in them. So the only way that you can get the oil when you're replacing it out of that stage is you have to screw in the relief. That pushes the little plug up, the little ball up. 
And that's what allows you to drain the oil. Which is pretty cool because if, if you forget about it, if you forget the fact that uh, you know, there's, you didn't leave the valve or you left the valve open or whatever, that ball will close and you, you won't lose the, the oil out of there, which is a pretty good feature. Okay, I'm not going to get into the operation as far as this being a tri-lobe blower unless you want me to. Uh, it, it, it is a three-lobe machine versus two-lobe. Uh, it is going to be somewhat quieter than a two-lobe machine because uh, two-lobe machines allow pressure to escape from the high-pressure side back to the low-pressure side, and that's where you get your Boom, boom, boom. You've probably heard of none of the PDs. You got PDs here on site? Positive displacement blowers on site? You do? So you know what I'm talking about as far as that banging? You won't get that with this machine because of the fact that it has three lobes and it does not allow the high pressure air to go back to the inlet side. So it should be fairly quiet. There's maintenance related to the motor as well. Like any motor, it's got bearings on either end. You have to. You have to grease those bearings from time to time. Again, that's called out in the O&M, the type of grease and the, um, and the frequency of replacing the grease. I keep on referring to the O&M, and I should let you know what it, what it looks like. This is your operation and maintenance manual. Um, these have been submitted to the engineer. I'm assuming they've been approved. I'm pretty sure they've been approved. They have, and CDM has these, and they're probably with you guys as well, okay? Oh, you've got, you've got it right there, okay. In here, you're going to find all of the information. First and foremost, the contacts. Who do you contact if you've got a problem? As well as local rep, that's me, phone numbers, contractor, dimensional information, the performance of the blower, what was it sold for, how much, how much volume and how much pressure. You guys, from a maintenance point of view, may not necessarily you know, get involved with that, but. It also has parts, descriptions, materials of construction. A pretty good sectional drawing. Refer to this manual when you're ripping this thing apart, if and when you are ever ripping it apart. I mentioned one thing, we see it frequently. Guys that aren't familiar with the blower, try to put heat to those gears. And I'll tell you that you, you ruin the gears and you ruin the, 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 the lobes and the shafts as well. It's important that you not, not put heat to them. But you are going to eventually have to replace these bearings. It is a rotating piece of equipment. You know, eventually there's going to be you know, bearings that are going to have to be replaced. They, only, they do not have a, an infinite life. So in here you can, you can check out the ability to, to access them, how to access them, how to replace them, how to pull them, et cetera, et cetera. And that's all called out in the O&M manual. If you ever need any parts or any information at all, um, on each blower is a serial number, and in here is the information as well. When the guys are painting, don't let them paint on the serial number, please. <laughs> or the, the nameplate, rather. The, I mean, it sounds basic, and you probably hear it all the time, but you wouldn't believe how many places you go to and it's, if they've been painted, you know? So it's, it's important that we have that serial number just to refer to in order to get you the correct parts and make sure everything is indeed uh, the correct size and whatnot. That, by the way, is called out right here. I'm talking about how you, how you break that blower down and how the frequency of maintenance, et cetera, et cetera. The blowers to date, one of the blowers or one set of blowers have been checked out for operation, and that's why we're going to have the ability to run one today. Um, so the, uh, the Arizon uh, service guy has been in, he's added the oil, he's checked everything out, I'm sure he's already run it, he's checked rotation, so we're going to be able to go down there and run it now, we'll go over the maintenance items that I was just talking about. Any questions? It, it might form a little bit when it's in operation, so it's better served when it's shut down. You're going to get a truer reading, okay. especially to determine exactly what that height is. Yeah, that's why I was asking. Sometimes you know, you'll see the higher level when the unit is off. You know, when it's in operation, yeah. Level. Yeah, I agree. Uh, on, on, on some pieces of equipment, uh, you, you do find that when it's idle, the, op the level is actually higher than when it's operating. On the blowers, uh, sometimes you get uh, a, a lot of uh, a lot of uh, churning of that oil, 
Uh, there's a lot of movement of that oil, so uh, it's difficult to, to gauge exactly what that level is. In order to get a true indication, you really should shut it down and let it level off. There are vent holes, by the way, and I'll show you these as well. These vent holes are located right next to the, to the um, fills. And those vent holes, obviously, as their name infers, are made for venting. Don't plug them. Sometimes you're going to get a little bit of oil coming out of there. You won't even be able to see it, but you may get a slight drip coming at the bottom. It might drain down a little drip. Just wipe it off. And what that is is it gives the ability for the inside of that area to vent so that the pressure doesn't build up in the cavities. All right, guys? But the best way to check that oil is to shut it down, check it, you know, let it settle, look at it, make sure it's okay. You can check and see if you've got oil in there as it's operating, but to determine whether it's at the right level or not, you're going to have to shut it down. Any other questions? No? Okay. And with that, we will head on over to, uh, to, the, to the blow itself. Out of the filter silencer. The air comes in from up above. You've probably got a nuisance uh, filter up above, something to keep squirrels and birds and bats out. Comes down, goes through the silencer, comes through the filter into the blower right here. If you, if you could stick your head in, you could actually put your head right in, look right down, right into the blower stage. I will have to get back to you in more detail with regards to the maintenance of this, how this comes apart and whatnot. I'm sure it says it in the O&M, but I'm not all that familiar with this one. This one's got some debris in it from construction. But it comes in, in and out pretty easy. Slides right back in. that in. Right here in the middle, maybe. Okay, this is your inlet filter silencer. It's feeding over to a vacuum switch. The vacuum switch itself is set at a maximum maximum of negative 20 inches of water so that when it reaches that point, if the filter is clogged or if, or if the inlet line is clogged, it will shut the, shut the uh, blower down. Here is a, is a discharge pressure, discharge pressure as well, above a certain PSI. I believe it's set at, I believe it's set, it's set at 6 PSI. I have to check that. But again, same idea. Here's your pressure switch. The switch will cut the, cut the blower out if it exceeds that pressure. And lastly, we have a temperature switch that will also shut the unit abo uh, above 275 degrees Fahrenheit. This is your oil drain. It's tethered so you don't lose it. Comes underneath, right here, fits right, this comes off, fits right on and threads right up. Pops it right in, releases that little plug and you can drain your oil. It's right underneath here. Here's your oil sight glasses. Here's your fill. So this is something we're going to have to maintain. This is obviously what you have to keep your eye on with regards to oil levels. This is your discharge silencer. There's really nothing you have to do about that. It's, it's pretty handy, actually. 
Okay. We get to see get to see it just from the other side. The motor is here. Alright. Motor has maintenance points as well. Grease fittings on either side. The motor is sitting on the hinge door. That's this piece right here. The hinge door effectively is what keeps your belts tension. That's the automatic tensioning device. So again, no belt squealing. So the the the, the motor has as I